The crypto space seems to be in a pretty wild position, with Bitcoin and almost every single altcoin going down quite a significant amount, but on the opposite end, and that's actually pretty funny if you ask me, there are coins right now that are going absolutely insane that are just fully based upon memes and that's actually not something you see in a time like this too often where bitcoin right now is given its dominance back but not to one of the major altcoins oh no no it's given it to shit coins to meme coins and if you guys have not noticed it it's just been a couple of different altcoins that have gone crazy but of course like always there's also a ton of crypto news so if you guys enjoy all these updates make sure you press that like button because I'm keeping you informed with everything, all right? You, you'll not miss out on anything if you watch these videos every single day. Starting it out, I've got a question for everybody watching this video. And that is, do you think we're going to go to $25,000 or to $30,000 next? Because right now, as we are currently speaking, Bitcoin is at $27,500, Ethereum at eighteen point six. Uh, sorry, 18600 I guess. XRP at 46.8 cents. And generally speaking, we're just going down, down, down. But not in double digits, not too crazy. It's just kind of a surprise to a lot of people. A couple of coins like OK Bay and Frax are in down in the nearly double digits. Uh, but for the upside, almost no single coin doing too amazing. With our best coins here being Render and Zill at plus 3 to 4%. Quick little news flash: the Mika bill has just officially been confirmed. For anybody that does not know, this was the European Markets in Crypto Assets bill that had a very big majority uh, win. And since it now sets the stage for crypto regulation in Europe, this is probably going to extrapolate to a couple of different countries or uh, jurisdictions around the world. I guess it showcases how the US with their SEC is just complete dog tier as they're falling behind in every way, shape or form. On the contrary, I can't say that the Mika bill is actually completely amazing because again, for the most part, the way I find it, right, is that all these things are being governed by people that don't fully understand it. They're trying to make rules regarding crypto, even though they're not in it. And a good example of that is Mr. Gary Gensler, because what he's been doing for a little while is given his guidance, given his thoughts. And even a couple years ago, he gave a course about blockchain tech. And the most fun part is he's, that's what he said himself, never held any crypto. But that's when I started to think about how can you give a course about blockchain technology, about Bitcoin, and give the good distinction if you've never actually been involved with the technology? Anyway, because the US is so behind, we've got, for example, Gemini actually taking some steps to move abroad, not with their main entity, it seems, but apparently they're trying to open a new uh, derivatives platform outside of the country so that people can actually still trade on Gemini because they know that the regulations in the US are just not that proper. So it has started this migration of sorts where Coinbase right now is like giving claps to the UK the whole day for all the good they're doing in crypto regulation. We're seeing Ripple thinking about moving, Coinbase thinking about moving, Gemini actually taking steps to move, Kraken thinking about moving. All these spearheads in the US that were putting the US on the map, they're thinking about leaving because the US is wacko. Here's a little uh, piece of insight. Did you know that MicroStrategy has bought like a freaking beast? I mean, obviously they have a lot of money and so uh, it's a little bit easier for them to DCA as well. It's their whole purpose. But the pointer is, and this is a very important one. I honestly have said this many times, but if you right now, you watching, want to get rich with crypto, I'm not a financial advisor, but the best way is to zoom out a little bit, understand that the crypto waves come in cycles, or I should say the crypto gains come in cycles. It continues to go up and has always continued to go up with a couple of down periods. But if you just stack your way down and you keep buying, it's going to be extremely hard to end up at a loss or in a bad position. As long as you're not being stupid with it, I think if we're looking back at this conversation in a year or two, you'll be up a crazy amount on your money if you kept buying the, the moments that it went lower. Like right now, for example, where the market is not in the best of positions, if you just keep buying your way down, I personally can't think of any person who can actually lose money over the long term with crypto. You gotta be ridiculously stupid, in my own opinion, with technology like this that at the brink of adoption, it's not even there just quite yet to then lose money with it. It's just, as long as you're being smart with it, which I try to explain to you guys on this channel, it's, it's very hard to lose. 
And for the most part, that's also what major companies are doing. Again, don't think, oh, but this or that company is, is not saying I should buy or this or that. You know how many times I have people in my family saying, hey, how's your crypto stuff going? Because they don't understand at the moment that all these main entities start pushing it, it's too late. The price is probably at $200,000 already. Apple's probably got crypto integrated wallets and so forth and so on. At that point, you're not an early adopter anymore. You have to step in and put the full trust and thrust in there <laughs> before the masses do. And that's exactly the position that we're in right now. That's at least the way that I personally see it. Having said that, I talked a little bit earlier about these meme coins, right? Now, I want you to understand here, guys. I am not a really big fan of meme coins, but if there's money to be made, I am there. Then again, you have to understand that the majority of things, majority of these things that are trending, I think the way I think about it, right? I, I can't confirm this, but I think a couple of big YouTubers are either being paid to talk about it or they, they got in early and they're working together with these guys because it seems that all the major coins that were going trending are all controlled by the same people. And all I can say about that is be wary when you're buying these crazy meme coins that you're not putting all your money and all your eggs into one basket. That's all I wanted to say about that. Another interesting part about the whole wave of crypto coming down right now is the fact that a lot of whales are all of a sudden waking up. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but a couple days ago, just slightly before crypto prices started to slide, we all of a sudden saw a massive $300 million ETH deposit to Coinbase, and all of a sudden things went down afterwards. Now, we've also got a whale with 1100 Bitcoin, 30 million bucks, that has been dormant for 10 years, transferring, you know, 278, nine, Bill, uh, sorry, why am I saying billion? Bitcoin or about $8 million to three new addresses just now. The whale received 1,128 Bitcoin in October 2012 and May 2013 when prices were $12.195. And, and what I've been trying to show you guys as well is follow the freaking money. Follow the freaking money and get rich that way because don't listen to what the rich say. Do as they do. That's what I always like to, to say to you guys. And right now, we're watching a couple of guys like, for example, here, the smart money who always buys ETH at low prices and sells at high prices is long ETH on compound today. So we watch that and we understand this is an hour ago. This might be a very nice strategy to follow. You don't need compound, but it says he's long on Ethereum. I personally like to use Bybit, so I could go to Bybit and open a long position there. By the way, right now, for anybody watching that does not have a Bybit account yet, I've got a $100 free trade for you. That means if you don't have an account, Check the link down below and you could open a $100 Bitcoin uh, derivatives position, a long position for absolutely free. And I always say to that, just do it, not financial advice, but the way it's like, if it's free, what do you really have to risk about it? Anyway, he deposited 10,000 ETH or 19 million bucks on Compound, then borrowed 3.2 million USDC and transferred to Binance, probably by Ethereum. Because again, he's been making a couple of very juicy moves over the last couple of months. And so what we like to do is just kind of follow along with him and, you know, see what type of moves he makes. Historically, he's been buying a, a good amount of ETH. That's not necessarily what I mean. He's just, he's been being smart with it. So copying him is not a bad idea at all. A little side note, I don't want to bring this too much to the attention, but be careful of all these fake, massive, like promotions of airdrops that are going around. These are fake. They're like official government accounts of sorts. Probably people got hacked or something. I don't know. But it's fake, you know, be careful with that. And also the smart whale yesterday. The smart whale transferred 34,000 ETH, 65 million to Binance three hours ago and appeared to have dumped. The whale exchanged 24 million USDC for uh, 55,000 ETH during USD depegging, USDC depegging, and withdrew all assets from FTX before FTX suspended withdrawals. Some people know, you know, some people know this stuff. So I'm analyzing more and more of some of these smart uh, whales, and I'll be sharing these insights with you like we're doing right here. So again, make sure you keep watching these videos for these insights, because this way, I personally think people can just make millions of dollars by just following what these smart people are doing. As very often, guys, it's not really that hard to make money in crypto unless you don't know what you're doing, unless you're trying to get more out of it than it can give you, unless you're taking the bigger risks that are not necessary for the big bucks potentially. But if you're being smart with it, the more money you have, the more money you'll make. That's always the case. But a lot of these guys are doubling their money every couple of months and to some of you that's like well then i double my 10 bucks i want to get ten thousand bucks i want to get a million bucks with my ten dollars hey it's just a little bit harder you might have to take more risk but for a lot of us right here doubling the money is already good enough it's insane to double your money in a couple of months but like we're seeing with some of these wills with tens of millions of dollars it really ain't that hard if you know where to look and again 
Just follow the freaking money, guys. Yeah, and we'll talk about this further on a little bit. By the way, tomorrow I'm going to release an airdrop video for you guys, so stay tuned for that. I think, no, the day after tomorrow probably. But we're, we're analyzing so much about what the whales are doing. I'm going to get a, not a report, but some sort of proper video out for you guys soon enough. So stick around and stay tuned for that. And also a little side note, if you've not done it yet, make sure you join my Discord. I'm thinking of doing a couple of Discord only giveaways, like a hundred bucks maybe next week or so. I was actually going to give away a thousand dollars to a Twitter person if Bitcoin's price stayed above 30,000 bucks. It's not doing so well though. So I'm thinking maybe I'll just still give away a hundred dollars or so to some people that are active in my Discord, but I'm not so sure exactly what I'm going to do just quite yet. I'm just going to revamp the Discord, have a lot of cool things in there, give a lot of cool analysis, maybe pay for some cool people to give their insights every single day. Not so sure, but I definitely recommend you guys to join the Discord if you haven't done that already. A link for that is down below, guys. And if you don't know what I mean with this, don't see or don't, sorry guys, don't just watch what they say, but watch what they do. Another good example here is a little while ago, Google will ban all cryptocurrency related ads. That was uh, four or five, or five years ago here. You can see it. And then what came in now, uh, just like a couple months ago, Google selects Coinbase to take cloud payments with cryptocurrencies and will use its custody tool. The thing there is a lot of these guys in your face are saying, no, it's bad like the major banks, et cetera, because it hurts their livelihood or they're afraid. But in the background, they're looking how to make money from it. They're looking how to adopt it, which is why I'm always so bullish on this crypto technology, because I know that big guys are adopting it and they're looking for every single way to get big on it. They're just not announcing it properly. The same thing applies to freaking Apple. I keep telling you guys in a couple of years, we'll look back at this video and think, man, that boy was right. Because I think personally that people that are buying right now have such an easy multiplier because of this Apple thing alone. The Apple CEO is bullish on crypto. I mean, in theory, he can actually just pump his own bags because if he buys, right, the Apple CEO, let's say a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, puts all his assets into it, then makes Apple actually adopt a crypto wallet. Boom, he's doubled his money. You know, he's, become, you know, he's doubled a billion dollars. Pretty simple. And it makes a lot of sense because Apple said they don't really want to hold crypto. And I understand they're not a, a company that people buy into for crypto exposure. Makes sense. But they're a technology company for, for a very good part. And they're the facilitator of so many ease of life things where the people nowadays want everything in the Apple ecosystem. And you think that Apple doesn't want to take a cut of the market to be the main cryptocurrency wallet provider out there. I think eventually they're gonna to wanna to do that. But again, it might take another three or so years, who knows? But I think it's gonna happen. And at that point, I think all the crypto prices we're talking about today are just extremely, extremely low. And another example of don't watch exactly what they say is Mr. Gensler right here in these videos. And I always find it so funny how we can just talk about Gensler for hours. Actually, I'll get you guys another fun video about this Gensler and crypto regulation stuff later today because it's so funny and I have so much to show you still. But um, in these videos, Gary Gensler promoted Algorand to thousands of investors as groundbreaking technology. Since then, Algorand is down over 90% and the SEC just filed a lawsuit alleging that they are unregistered securities should Gensler be held liable. It's just a fun little skit right there because Gary Gensler is also so indecisive. But more importantly, don't necessarily listen to his words of, oh, Algorand is so good because in the back end of all things, he's actually trying to slam it into the ground. And don't listen to his words of almost every single crypto is a security except for Bitcoin because, well, he doesn't have the authority to, to say that, really. Anyway, another good reason as to why the market is not in a good position is that the entire traditional market is in just a strange position right now. Little side note, I just saw this. Apparently, Metropolitan Bank bids goodbye to crypto. The commercial bank has announced its exit from the cryptocurrency market. As of March 31st, digital asset-related deposits accounted for only 4% of the bank's total deposits. And so they're quitting it. They're saying goodbye to crypto. The move will have minimal impact to the company, but it's probably because of uh, Mr. Gary Gensler, right? Like I said, we've also had the major Mika bill be approved today, which is very, very big news. Uh, but also at the same time, we've had Coinbase go over to Washington, D.C. Uh, the CEO urges Congress to intervene on crypto regulation. He tried today. Actually, he's been trying for the last couple of days. Not so sure exactly how much of a difference it will make. And by the way, if you're wondering why the Mika is so important, it's because usually Europe sets the standard for how rules should be. Europe has very strict rules on most things, funny enough. And so the fact that they have then strict rules and uh, most countries in the world are like pretty loose about it makes them want to kind of catch up. Not completely, but because then Europe is probably so strict, at least they had to up their antics ever so slightly. And you can also see the vote. 
Uh, it was just voted upon with a 517 to 38 in favor of Mika. It's kind of funny how they're like taking a couple of different jabs at the SEC for, you know, in a couple of different tweets and uh, comments. We're protecting consumers and safeguarding financial stability and market integrity. Kind of what the SEC plans to do but can't. The European crypto uh, asset industry has regulatory clarity that does not exist in countries like US, Berger said. The sector that was damaged by the FTX collapse can regain trust. And again, this is just the start of things. This is just the fact that things are now coming in. From some perspective, again, I'm not too happy with the fact that this is happening, but it's a necessary step. And it just depends on what exact rules are going to be implemented as time progresses. Uh, there are two parts in this. However, we have the Mika, markets and crypto assets. And we've got the, um, what's it called again? Transfer of funds regulation. This one is the scarier one because this requires crypto operators to identify their customers in a bid to hold money laundering with 14 abstentions. Again, I'm not for money laundering. That's not what I'm trying to say here. I'm just saying the rules exactly on that. I don't know as of this point, but that could be the difference maker here because that could make a lot of crypto platforms not be able to operate anymore. Then again, the idea that a lot of exchanges and all these providers, wallet providers, for example, need proper licenses to operate. And the same thing for stable coins to have proper reserves. All that stuff ain't really that bad. Once more, a lot of the proper rules are still not finalized. It's just the fact that right now they're starting a new era for crypto regulation in Europe. It's partially good, partially bad. It just depends on exactly how they do it, but only time will tell. That was it for today's crypto video, though, guys. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, I had a different color light. Did you guys notice? Like different color blue. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll definitely see you guys again in another crypto video, hopefully later today. Probably about Gary Gensler and some cool stuff. <laughs>